Hey everybody, it's Helen Anderson. It's Toby Porter, and we are the Milky's, the Milky's Moms. Moms. Oh, we got it right this time. <laughs> like that it. That doesn't happen very often. Um, so this is the first time that we have gotten together to do our Facebook Live post called the Boob Tube. Right, because Toby and I actually live on opposite ends of the country. I live in Oregon. Pretty cold there, isn't it? It's cold. It's really nice here. <laughs> I live in Florida, but we have met not really in the middle because we are in California. That's right. Doing our little show, which is kind of cool because it's sunny, even though it's sunny for me normally all the time. Not for me. It's raining. <laughs> So um, there's a couple people. We're going to keep talking for a little bit till we get um, some more followers that are showing up. But a little bit about each other is that we met like eight or nine years ago as mom inventors and right. mompreneurs at a show. Mm -hmm. At a trade show. So I um, created the Milky's Milk Saver. And Toby created a wonderful product called Milk Trays. And we also had a lot in common with our kind of our backgrounds and our personality. Um, so I'm an, I'm an ER nurse, and that's kind of a fast-paced, uh, pretty high-stress job. And um, Toby. Oh, seven. We got seven. Woo! Yeah. Fourteen. <laughs> Woo! Our boob tube is started. It's launched. It's launching. It's launching. Eighteen. All right. So I know we said that. And Toby is, she's a firefighter paramedic. Wow. So we're, I'm giving yes. her some background. And so she and I have sort of similar personalities and that I think that we both are into kind of seizing the day. Seizing right? the day. Because seizing the moment. Seizing Get it all moment. done. Yes, because we, I think, have both kind of realized that, you know, tomorrow's not a guarantee. We've definitely seen that happen in our in our jobs. So um, In our lives, in our, in lives. our jobs. Yeah. And being breastfeeding working, moms, women in general, women, let me hear you roar. <laughs> yeah, we, uh, we uh, know what it feels like to be out there and doing everything and trying to breastfeed. And it's right. all about, it's all about boobs right now, right? It's the boob tube. That's, That's boob. why we're here. I, I, if I grab myself, I, I apologize. That's I what we do here. Do in fact, everybody, let's all grab ourselves right now. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I do doubles. She That's okay. Single. That's okay. But Everything's I know the one here. thing we were going to talk about, because I know we've got a lot of people online right now, we were going to talk about how your breast actually makes breast milk. Right. I mean, I know what my breasts feel like, and I know what they do, mm -hmm. but I, I, didn't, I don't really know how my breasts actually make breast milk. Well, we're going to get into that, and it's really, it's really exciting. It really takes kind of some of the mystery out of milk supply, and we know that milk supply is something that a lot of women have questions about. We do a lot of uh, chats on social media. We are kind of out there talking to moms. Milk supply is a big topic, so we're going we're gonna to really try to break it down to the cellular level about... We're going to unveil, we're gonna unveil it. the mystery of how your breasts make Breast milk. Right. Because I think for moms, at least from the perspective of a first-time breastfeeding mom, is that we really don't know how our breasts make breast milk. Mm -hmm. And I think to know that, we would actually be able to be more successful in our breastfeeding journey. Because that's what we're all about, right. is being successful, and we want you guys to be successful in supporting you in whatever journey or whatever goals you've got set for yourselves. Um, that's great, Melissa. I'm glad to see that you grab yourself in public. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's <laughs> fine. We're, we're all medical people here. I think that I've seen, um, as a nurse, I've seen more naked people in a week than most people see, like, probably in their whole life. So I've seen I'm naked totally, people I'm that totally I don't <laughs> ever want to see naked. I don't think I've ever seen a hot naked person. Not happen. in my career. No, it's always so. Bad. We're just going to keep it real here. So as a nurse and a firefighter paramedic and also breastfeeding moms, I breastfed three of my babies. Uh, Toby has two that she's breastfed. And so um, this is your place to get real. We're going to get real with you guys. Um, we're going to have fun. Yeah. And we're going to learn a lot. Right. Exactly. So let's first talk about how our breasts make breast milk. What, 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 what do they do? What's going on in there? Unveil the boobs. Okay. okay. So we know what our breasts look like from the outside. Um, and there's a lot of kind of opinions about what breast size means, whether it affects your ability to make milk or not. And what we know is it really doesn't have a lot to do with breast size. That Wait a minute. So you're saying because I am, you know, hold on, let me get up here. I'm a little more. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying you're less, but you're, you know, on the smaller side. <laughs> She's so nice. <laughs> So, so you're saying that me having larger breasts does not mean I'm going to make more breast milk than you? That's right. Because, I'll show you my graphic here. Good to know. Yes. So here's our graphic. 
So this is what your breasts look like on the inside. And a lot of what makes the size of a breast that we think is a big, bigger breast or a smaller breast is really fat. And fat, we know, is... Are you <laughs> saying that I have to <laughs> put my boobs on a diet? <laughs> I'm not saying that. I'm saying that that's normal because that's the way Mother Nature made us, that we need to have more fat because we need to nourish our kids during those lean times. That's how humans have survived for all these thousands of years is that we know that mommies need to have more uh, fat tissue or energy stores um, than, uh, than our male partners. So what's all these things going on right here? So these look like grape clusters, and I'm going to move them even closer here. Um, what those are is those are actually where our milk is made and where our milk is stored. So think about these things called alveoli. Right? Now, wait a minute. Aren't there alveoli? Now, no one can see me because I've got a big uh, thing in front of my face. There you go. Um, <laughs> Alveoli are something that you find in the lungs, and that's what we do to breathe. So you're saying there's alveoli in the breast, too? In the breast. In the breast. And when I think about alveoli, I always think about grape clusters. And they look like grapes, right? Kind of at the end of stems. And... Our alveoli in our breasts behave actually really similar to the alveoli in our lungs because the alveoli in our breast, instead of doing gas exchange like our lungs do, what we have is proteins, carbohydrates, and fats and other uh, materials moving across this really thin membrane. Goes into the alveoli and our lactocytes are the cells that actually make the milk. Okay, so it's very similar to our lungs in that some of the structures look the same, but instead of exchanging oxygen and CO2, we're getting the fats, the carbohydrates, and the proteins across this thin, thin membrane, and we're putting them into your breast milk for your baby to consume. So let's talk about um, actually making, we know, that, okay, so that's the structure, mm -hmm. those little alveoli and those, those little grapes. Um, but what actually causes them to make breast milk? Is there a hormone that gets released? Right, there is a hormone. So what's kind of cool is how our bodies, of course, the more you learn about your body, the more you just are amazed at how well it works all the time, right? Is that initially your breast milk is made because of your hormones telling your, your lactocytes, hey, make milk, because your baby's not born yet. So we know that during the late months of pregnancy, a lot of times we're leaking colostrum. And that's your lactocytes getting, doing their thing, really. They're kind of getting their... They're starting to get ready. They're, they're starting to get ready, right. Kind of, okay. They're, they're starting to have, do their thing. Right. But then we have this kind of, like, cranky hormone called progesterone. And progesterone, actually, we need it. It keeps our pregnancy going. But what it does to prolactin is it tells prolactin, hey, you, calm down. We don't need you yet. Oh, he's the grumpy old man. He's the grumpy old man. Get off my lawn. Get away from my lactocytes. But it's important to have that because oh, we don't want to. Super important. So wait a minute. Actually, that's our colostrum that's in there. So we don't want our colostrum to leak out too soon because we need that for the baby because I know that colostrum does some amazing things. Yeah, we need it. Colostrum is so it. amazing. We know that it's this, you don't make much of it. You make maybe a tablespoon a day but you don't need much. Um, it's all your baby needs because your baby's stomach is so small, but colostrum is your baby's first immune boost. It's also a laxative because your baby in the womb is swallowing amniotic fluid. Yes, all because fluid. Yeah, it has to sw they, they have to swallow the fluid because they have to get the digestive tract. It's right near the end. They have to get the digestive tract a little bit ready to mm -hmm. start consuming Right. food. So as, you know, when your baby is born, they're born with what's called meconium. And the meconium is inside the digestive tract. Oh and we need colostrum to get that yeah. black, yucky stuff out. Right. It's, a, it's, colostrum is, you know, one of the function is a laxative. So if you've ever taken a laxative before, it makes you poop. Ooh. And, and that's, would poop a lot. That's, but that's what we need because we have this sticky, black, tarry stool and if it stays in baby's digestive tract for too long then your baby is at risk for jaundice okay so the colostrum is very important and that's why the progesterone being kind of the grumpy old man we need him <laughs> right her, it, whatever well yeah we need it <laughs> old men are grumpy, old men are grumpy. Say, let's call yeah. grumpy old man. so we need you know the progesterone to keep the um 
the prolactin and the colostrum from coming out too soon. But right. once the baby's born, does that little grumpy old man go away? So, right, exactly. Okay. Once your placenta is delivered, the grumpy old man leaves with your placenta. Oh, okay. Gosh. Grumpy old <laughs> man. So, right. And so that once that progesterone is no longer keeping the prolactin tamped down, then your prolactin is free to act on your, on your um, lactocytes, and then your mature milk production is going to start. So all of these transitions happen because of your hormones. So... If you can kind of imagine all the things that kind of are happening inside your body and you're not really even aware of these things, um, but that's why it's good to let things happen as naturally as possible because we don't have a good understanding about when and why, whoops, <laughs> the wind just picked up, when and why these, these um, hormones kind of get started in production and we can't synthesize them, we can't. No. duplicate them so they have to ha just happen naturally okay now I know I have a question that a lot of you moms are gonna have um, which is you know when does the colostrum stop and when does the breast milk start because I know it's not instant we know there's a little bit sometimes it's a day sometimes it's a few hours when does that start and is it the same for everybody it's not the same for everybody no. there's a lot of things that can influence when your mature milk comes in one of those things is if your baby um, is born early. So okay. if you go into labor before um, before you're ready and before your baby's ready, um, then that can cause a disruption in your hormones. Just things aren't kind of ready to happen quite yet. So your milk supply could take a little while to come in. Right. Okay. Also, but, you still, but there's other things. There's, there's got to be some right. things that get in the way of hormones. Right. And also, so if you have a scheduled C-section or a scheduled induction. So if you don't if your body doesn't have a chance to go into labor, then you, your body doesn't have a chance to kind of get that hormonal flow going the way it needs to do to set your lactocytes up to be ready to make milk when your baby is ready for it. Right, because your body's going to take time and whatever time it is. Some people do have fast labor and some mm -hmm. people have slow, but if they have fast labor naturally, mm -hmm. then everything is ready to go. The hormones have done all the talking back and forth. Yes. The breasts are ready. Right. But if we get um, induced early mm -hmm. uh, or just induced, and it's a lot faster when they do that. So the problem is, is that, you know, it's a synthetic hormone that they right. use. So Pitocin. Pitocin mm -hmm. Synthetic, right? And we naturally produce Pitocin, but if we get it synthetically, our body doesn't really recognize it. Right. So there's a delay mm -hmm. in getting the, the hormones that are talking to our lactocytes. Right. So As I of, grab my boobs and I do that. <laughs> Again, let's all grab our boobs. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, you, so what you're saying is there's a lot of things that can get in the way. So you can't really answer that question. It's when different does for everybody. the milk come in? It's different for everybody. And if you have questions, definitely talk to your lactation consultant. Uh, go to your the hospital where you deliver or if you have a home birth. Find someone in your area that can help you out with these questions. And I see lots of questions coming up, and mm -hmm. please know everybody know that we're gonna we're gonna talk we're gonna go back and respond to all of those. Um, okay, so I know we're learning about how our breasts produce breast milk, and we're learning a little bit about that. We have a little bit of a backstory with that, um, and we don't know when our colostrum is gonna change into breast milk. But I think in learning, uh, there's some more that you can tell us on how we can make sure our breast milk comes in quicker if there's a delay. Right. Because that's what I would want to know. Mm -hmm. So if there is a delay in um, And we lost a thing. I'm going to go get it. I'm going to get one of our graphics. The wind blew away. <laughs> it blew it away. <laughs> so she can cover my face again, which is what she's going to do. Which so she can make faces at there. me from behind, probably. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we've, we've got something has happened. Obviously, if everything is natural and we deliver, everything's great, you know, usually nothing is going to get in the way of all those hormones and you're mm -hmm. going to start your breast milk supply when you're supposed to in a short time frame, usually within two days, correct? Right. So if that's, you're, the, that's the normal way. If, then you have, the, if you have an uncomplicated labor and your baby is born ready to breastfeed and ready to nurse, you put your baby to breast right away and then those. Um, lactocytes get the signal, hey, let's go, it's time to start making milk. Now there is a delay, right? It doesn't happen day one when you put your baby to breast. You need those that colostrum for a few days. But for most moms, between 50 and 75 hours is when your mature milk is going to start coming in. Right. And then we talked about there's a delay sometimes. Because I know moms talk about my milk never came in or my milk didn't come in. And that's going to be because, you know, 
other extenuating circumstances around their birth has delayed that, you know, two day or mm -hmm. three day time frame. So for them, we need to be, you need to be a little bit prepared. And that's what the boob tube and what us Milky's moms right. are all about is trying to share information, educate, support, be there. Um, so if this is going to happen to you and you're going to have some extenuating circumstances around your birth, there is something that you can do to improve mm -hmm. that, uh, the breast milk coming in sooner instead right. of later. Right. And how are we going to do that? So the best thing you can do is just breastfeed right away. If your baby can't breastfeed right away. Maybe your baby has to go to the NICU or some other reason why uh, your baby isn't able to go to breast. Then you want to start pumping right away and just get those those cells stimulated and let them know time to wake up and get to work. Now, when when the baby is uh, latched on mm -hmm. and suckling, mm -hmm. or the pump is suckling and right. It, wow, 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 <laughs> distorting wow. my nipple, right. which I know you moms know that when you saw that, you were probably like, is that ever, is that ever, is it, please tell me that's going to go back to normal. But, uh, I, you know, I went off track on that. But, um, all right, so when that happens, that also stimulates a hormone too, doesn't it? That's right. Prolactin is stimulated whenever we have stimulation around your nipple. So when you put your baby to breast, um, prolactin, it, your nerves around your, in your breast stimulate a um, gland in your brain to, re to release prolactin. And then prolactin is going to work on your lactocytes, and it's also going to cause the muscles around your milk ducts to contract, and then your milk is going to ha have your letdown reflex, which is where your milk kind of shoots out of both nipples at the same time. And on the side your baby's nursing on, that's great because your baby's just getting a lot of free milk. And um, on the other side, you, you might be leaking and, and dripping. So remember that let so we want that bilaterally. We want the prolactin train woo, 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 to come. Prolactin is a good thing. Prolactin train to come yep. going on. So, so that means to me, if I'm listening to this and digesting and, mm -hmm. and learning with you guys at the same time, that means to me that, you know, the more we are stimulating, the right. more suckling, the more breastfeeding, the more pumping, mm -hmm. if you have to do that, we're including both, the more you do that, the more that prolactin train start coming down, and we're going to produce more breast milk. Right. Now, let me show you something that's really kind of the dictator of your milk supply. It's going okay? to gonna be another prop. <laughs> it is. So you know. But visual aids are good. Right. I like visual aids. Right. And so remember how we have our alveoli here? And this is where our milk is stored inside here. Well, guess what? These alveoli, the walls of them, have stretch receptors. So we know that when the walls of this alveoli, alveoli are stretched with too much milk, what they do is they send a signal to your lactocytes. Hey, slow down. We have too much milk. So I have a kind of a visual aid here. I have my, see? Oh, my, I little, can see my little hair rubber band, okay? <laughs> so this is a stretch receptor. You can see this little circle right here. This is a stretch receptor, and pretend this is the wall of our alveoli. Now, right now, it's relaxed. It's kind of an oval shape. and So right our, now we're looking at an empty Yes, this is, a, this is an empty alveoli. Empty alveoli. No milk is in there. No milk. Okay. Right? Or such a little amount of milk that it's not being stretched. Okay. But, uh-oh, I'm at work. Um, my boss needs me to do an extra project. I need to pump, but I just don't have time. And my stretch receptor is going to get deformed. So you see how instead of having a nice, a nice round little oval, instead I've got almost a line here. So now here, this means we're full. We've got a lot of milk in there, and we can feel that we need to, we feel like we need to pump, right. or we need to, to breastfeed. So this is a representation of what the walls of your alveoli look like when you need to pump or you need to nurse your baby. Have a big stretch when my alveoli walls are stretched like this and my receptor is misshapen, then it's sending a signal, too much milk, slow down production. So stretched is bad. Stretch means stretched is we're gonna stop making milk. Stretch means slow supply. Okay. And then non-stretched, go back to your, this means, oh my produce, gosh, produce, I need to make produce. more milk. I need to make more milk. Oh. I'm not stretched. I'm relaxed. I've got prolactin coming at me, but my stretch receptors are relaxed. That means 
I need to get going. I need to start working overtime making milk. But here we go. This is the boss of everything. The stretch receptors in your alveoli are what dictates your milk supply. So we know that initially hormones dictate your milk supply. But after your mature milk comes in, mm -hmm. your stretch receptors are totally in charge of your milk supply. Okay, so mm -hmm. In talking about milk supply, so we've got something that deals with our milk coming in in the beginning, which we know there's factors that can get in the way, and we're gonna we're gonna we're jumping in front of those now that we kind of know how breast milk is created. Mm -hmm. But our milk supply is something that all of us mm -hmm. have get worry about. Am I gonna have enough milk? Um, I've set a goal for six months, for four months, for one year, mm -hmm. and for longer than that. I've set a goal, am I gonna make that? Am I gonna make that? So we always worry about supply. So what you're saying to me is that it's not necessarily drink more water, eat more oatmeal, even though those are good things. Mm -hmm. You're saying it's the more I empty the breast, mm -hmm. the more I release and, and make those stretch receptors small, mm -hmm. then my body is telling, or my receptors are telling me to produce more milk. Right. More milk. So the first thing you can do to increase your supply, be sure you keep those breasts empty. And then all these other things are secondary milk boosters that definitely do help increase your supply as long as those stretch receptors aren't, aren't stretched out. So you've got to empty the breast frequently. Definitely drink more water, eat your oatmeal, take your fenugreek. These are all things that can help boost your supply as long as you're not getting this overriding signal from your stretch receptors to slow down your milk production. So that really makes sense for moms that, you know, have to go back to work because you're at home and your baby is, is crying and demanding and letting you know that you need to empty your breast. But when you go back to work, you don't have that external stimulus. Right. So we tend to go on a a schedule like every three mm -hmm. hours I'm going to pump mm -hmm. and the problem is that maybe we should actually be pumping more than that right because by the time your breasts feel full those stretch receptors are already getting the message to slow down milk production so you know one day at work when you're busy you don't have time to pump um, that's probably not going to tank your supply but if you have day after day after day after day, day, after day, day, after day, after day. then that's something that you really want to Remember that if you are wanting to keep your supply up and you're noticing a decrease in your supply, that's probably the result. So a few things that moms can do. Yeah, what can we do about working. that? Let's do something about that. On your days off breastfeed, we know that a baby empties the breast better than a pump. So if you have weekends off, put your pump away Saturday and Sunday. Just breastfeed your baby. Really prioritize breastfeeding on your days that you're home from work. Another thing you can do is hands-on pumping. And this is a great thing to do anyway at work because it really speeds up milk removal. So what you're gonna do is um, use probably a hands-free pumping bra, get your, your pump ready to go, turn it on, and then you're gonna use your hands. Again, we're gonna touch our boobs, which is fine here, <laughs> to <laughs> move the milk yes. down. So we're just doing really- So we're hand compressing. Right. Along with pumping or nursing. Right. You can also do this when you're breastfeeding. So your baby's on this side, let's say you've got maybe a nursing pillow here and you can go ahead and use breast compression to even get more milk um, into your baby. That's great if you are if you have a sleepy baby. A lot of times breast compression I see, can help I see a good question on here um, from Lily Mae. Hi, she <laughs> says that um, should we pump before we feel full? And I would say from what I have learned, yeah. yes, you should pump before you feel full because the reality is where's that stop sign there's a stop and green sign she's got another prop but it's a good one that if you're full then what's going on or almost full there's that red light okay. it's telling your receptors to not create milk but when you're empty the green light goes on and it's telling the body to produce milk so yes definitely pump before you feel full right because we want we want to be in green light Green light means go. Green empty means breast go. means faster milk production. Faster milk production means more milk, right? Because we're producing milk faster. So we want to be green light, making more milk, making more milk faster. So yes, and I saw that question a little bit earlier because there's so many. There's so many of you guys on here. We are like, boop tube is rocking. <laughs> <laughs> give me, give me, don't leave me hanging. Okay. She's leaving me okay. hanging, I swear to gosh. Um, 
but yeah, so it really means emptying the breast. And, you know, pumping as much as possible is a great thing to do. Now, I know um, I, being a firefighter, have done nothing of the norm when it comes to pumping. So um, I always encourage moms to do whatever works for you, whatever schedule, whatever not schedule works for you. But if you're stuck at work and you can't pump as easily, what I'm learning from this is that maybe it means I need to pump some more at night, even though I don't mm -hmm. want to have to do that. But the reality is if I'm having a supply issue, maybe take a few days or a week and pump some extra at night so that we're emptying those receptors and that might help you know, overcome what we did during the day. Right. Yeah. So for me, my babies, luckily they slept through the night oh, about eight weeks and sleep through the night to me means like five hours. Right. But at seven to eight weeks, five hours without breastfeeding left me really, really full when they were ready to eat. And so for me, that was not good for my milk supply. So what I did is I just set my alarm and get up and I would pump kind of halfway through the night, um, which was great for my supply and also really great for my freezer stash. So now I see a question on there. What happens, it, can you have uneven amount of alveoli <laughs> yes, in sure. the boobies? Breasts are like any other body part. They are <laughs> They're not, not always even. Symmetrical. I have a bigger ear, actually. Like I have. What? We're all, yeah, we're all kind what? of a little lopsided. Huh. So um, I'm perfect. I don't know what she's talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I have to stop and laugh at that one. Okay. So I'm perfectly <laughs> imperfect. That's what I am. Perfectly imperfect. <laughs> so yes, you could have less. So definitely because of a couple of things. So first of all, we can have. Um, kind of the tubules that lead from your milk ducts out of your nipple, sometimes it can be harder for babies to remove milk from one breast or another, or sometimes they just prefer one breast. And we know... Oh, we, know, we, know <laughs> we know there are people that prefer more than one. Right. <laughs> well, exactly. And so, guess what? These stretch receptors work independently of each other. So if your baby really likes, prefers one side for whatever, and I know my babies did, they were kind of breasted. Can you be handed? You can be breasted, I guess. They were like left breasted or So something. were they righties or were they lefties? <laughs> and so if your baby prefers one side um, over the other, that's fine. It's normal. It could just be he likes laying on one side, you know, rather than but the other. That means the receptors on the side he's he or she is preferring is actually filling up more often than the other side. So exactly. So it's kind of reinforcing that. That you've gotta maybe spend you, a little more time on the side they don't here. like. Right. Yeah. Okay. And so another thing you can do to, to um, increase your supply on your days off when you're breastfeeding, uh, if you're working, is to be sure that your baby finishes one breast before you switch them to the other. Um, so sometimes we can be tempted if we're feeling full on both sides to take our baby off a little earlier. And so they can be sure to take some off the other side. Um, if that's the case, just pump on the other side if your baby gets full off off the first breast because we really want the breast to be thoroughly emptied. Before. We need to empty. So the key things, moms, mm -hmm. is that your breasts need to be emptied. So obviously breastfeeding is going to do that. But if you're pumping, we're talking about the manual compression mm -hmm. to really make sure we're emptying. And it's actually more breastfeeding, more breastfeeding, more breastfeeding, the breast. or more pumping, more pumping, right. more pumping. And, so in right. the end, it's doing all of that. It's all just it. getting it done. All the other science and things of eating right, yes, do, do that. It. Drinking, yes. Mm -hmm. But it's a fact of demand. Right. If I'm demanding, I'm producing. If I'm not demanding, right. I'm not producing. This is the dictator right here. Be sure that your breasts are empty. And then do all these other things, your fenugreek and your oatmeal and your water and your good nutrition. Those definitely can be a part of your plan. But the first thing you need to do is get those stretch receptors relaxed. And then everything else is free to, to work. But if we have this kind of putting a lid on everything, then you're gonna find that anything else you do just isn't gonna be effective. So a way to think about pumping is that your pump can't empty the breast on its own. Your pump needs help. So your hands are going to be what works in tandem with right. your pump to empty your breast. Yeah, it basically it's about being, you know, good with feeling yourself. <laughs> It's so bad. We have to love our bodies. <laughs> we do love our bodies. You know, and we have to be able to, you know, know that we've set a, a goal for ourselves as moms. And you know what? 
moms, we are amazing. We right. can do anything. Not only are we, that's right, we're loving on each other right here. Not only, you know, are we moms, are we raising, we're kind of moms to our husbands too, just a little bit. I don't know if anybody else is, but I know I feel like I have a third child. It's my husband. She always says, bless his heart. But and then, he is a saint. But sometimes I feel like I'm a mother to my husband. Right. Um, you know, and some of us work and some of us volunteer. We are just amazing people and we can do it we right. can do we can do it all mm -hmm. and sometimes we just need a little bit of support and a little bit of knowledge to help us to go into our goals ready and prepared and have like you know two guns loaded instead of right. only one right and I think knowing how your breasts produce breast milk and how we can stimulate that and continue that that's what we got to keep doing. So it's been, oh my gosh, 30 minutes. We can talk. I guess when my husband says I never shut up, actually, he's probably right. Um, we have loved having all of you guys on here. This has been the Boob Tube. We are going to be doing a lot more of these with more information. I think the next one I want to talk about is, you know, how to get ready to go back to work when you're breastfeeding and pumping and how to get all that done. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, throw in some suggestions in there on what you guys would like us to talk about because um, we are here for you. The boob tube is started, and hopefully we're going to create a, a sensation, and it's going to be the boob tube nation. That's <gasps> is that a bumper sticker? <laughs> boob tube nation. Boob so tube nation. follow Belly to Breast on Instagram and Twitter. Yes. Watch our Facebook feed for um, – listings for our next boob tube and we'd love to see all of you back here um let your friends know that this is a great place to get research-based breastfeeding information um that's support yeah that's really it's really genuinely going to help your supply we're both breastfeeding moms we've both been there um but we also work in the medical field so we're very much about you know knowledge is power and, the right knowledge yeah and we want to definitely give you those tools to, to succeed and all all those comments we're going to go back in and actually respond to everybody so hopefully there'll be some more information so definitely keep watching this all right okay love you guys so much bye, bye.